Hi everyone and welcome back to the garden. It's a beautiful autumnal morning here. That low sun's just cutting through now, highlighting the leaves as they're slowly starting to change colour. Max is sunbathing on the cobbles behind the camera, just enjoying the last of that summer warmth in the sun. But it's definitely autumn. The last of the sunflowers in the field at the top of the village, that's finishing flowering now. And here in the garden, some things are just tipping over that point now. They're definitely past the best and they know what's around the corner. Others, like the salvias, the nasturtiums, they're still growing strongly and flowering as though it's midsummer. They look absolutely fantastic. But today, before I start my videos looking at overwintering and the winter care that I give to all the different exotic plants behind me, I want to talk about something that you can plant now that will give you so much joy and interest next year, and that's spring bulbs. Specifically, my favourite spring bulb, which is Fritillaria imperialis. When it comes to bold colour at this time of year, you're absolutely spoilt for choice. Plants like this Sidicium ginger here, along with dahlias and cannas, they bring that colour right onto the frost. But when it's spring, your choices may be a bit more limited. And a lot of bulbs you might be familiar with, you know exactly what they're like, and you might think they don't really fit in with the exotic garden vibe I'm trying to create. But that's where fritillaria's come in. And if you look at that packet there, that shows you what these look like in flower. They're absolutely incredible, they grow to around a metre tall, and have these beautiful orange, yellow, red flowers. There's loads of different varieties, there's even a variegated one that I grow here as well. It fits in so well with the other variegated plants. They're just such an impressive bulb that has such a presence in the spring garden. Hopefully then you decided that you want to try growing fritillaria's next year. In this video, I want to go through a few different tips in terms of buying, planting and growing them to get the biggest and the best display possible, as well as how I grow them here in the tropical garden. So firstly, you can buy them from a lot of different places. I got these online. You can get them from eBay even, a lot of different sellers, as well as in person at garden centres. And sometimes that actually has an advantage which is if you buy them online you can't see what you're getting so here these bulbs are actually quite small and if you haven't grown fritillaries before they're potentially quite a big bulb and they will get bigger over time so I think it's well worth doing if you nip down to your garden centre choose the biggest and the best bulbs you can because I think those the more likely to flower in the first year and get a bigger plant sooner so that's definitely my first tip when it actually comes to it and when it comes to planting pretty much any time in autumn is absolutely perfect and if you're not used to growing bulbs you've not tried them before it's really easy you cannot go wrong they're even easier than growing seeds and on the back of the packet it gives you all the information that you need and they're usually quite vague when it comes to bulbs really in terms of when you plant them anywhere from september through to november and when it comes to bulbs like this as you flower later it doesn't really matter too much when you plant them i suspect really you could plant them even into december they might flower in may time instead of april but it's still worth getting in the ground and still worth trying out to be part of your spring garden next year as I mentioned, there's quite a few different varieties, different colours, different growing heights, but they've all got the same exotic impact. These ones are rubra, but I've got a few different sorts last autumn, planted them in the garden, and those, they definitely flowered well this spring. But whichever variety you go for, one thing I would recommend is actually getting a lot of them. Get quite a few, because there's so much more impact in a clump rather than just individual plants dotted around. Personally, I'm a big believer that when it comes to planting, three is the magic number, but any kind of odd number, it delivers a certain sort of balance. Personally, I've got loads of different plants dotted around the garden in groups of three. I just think it works so well, and it's a great thing to do with fritillarias. But when it actually comes to planting them, probably the most crucial thing that you'll want to know is how deep you plant them. And if you've not planted bulbs before, you might hear all kinds of different things, but as a general rule, the bigger the bulb, the deeper you plant it. And when it comes to fritillarias, you'll hear lots of different ideas about how deep you should plant them. Some people say four inches, 100 mil. Some people say deep as a foot, which is 12 inches, 300 mil. So there's a lot of different, uh, yeah, options out there personally i go somewhere in the middle maybe around 200 mil eight inches somewhere around there it's a nice bit of depth but it's not so deep that if the bulb's only a small one it's actually going to struggle to make it out that first year so really anywhere between that and about that and you should be absolutely fine they're an easy plant to grow and it does actually say in the packet that they need full sun or partial shade and my experience here absolutely goes along with that i plant them throughout the garden a few different spots and one crucial thing is that somewhere that's shaded in summer might not be shaded in spring. Like here in the garden, most of behind me now is actually in full shade because of that big tree there. It only sees that evening sun. But in the winter, that tree hasn't got its leaves. So I think really, when it comes to bulbs, it's not absolutely crucial where you put them in your garden. And I think personally, I think the key thing is to actually plant them somewhere where you can appreciate them, somewhere you can enjoy them. And rather than having them somewhere that's maybe technically perfect at the far end of the garden, grow them close to your house, maybe close to your front door, your back door, somewhere you can see from the windows. Because they only flower for a few weeks of the year, you really want to take that in, appreciate it, and get everything you can from it. Max has just come to join me now. And one thing, 
was obviously bored by the video already. One thing with these bulbs that you will notice is the smell. Now, they've certainly got a fragrance which I should probably describe as herbal. They've definitely got a very strong scent of something you might... <laughs> every single time. They've certainly got a strong fragrance that might remind you of something, depending on the sort of people you hang around with, but I'll leave it to you to work that out for yourself. And it's not just the fragrance that comes out when they flower, but even the bulb, that's got such a strong smell. And when the box of these actually got delivered, Alice knew straight away what, well, hopefully what she thought it was, and she was right, fritillaria bulbs. But when it comes to planting, it doesn't matter too much where you've got them. And I think as long as your garden's not complete shade, they're actually quite easy going and should be fine in most places. And here in the garden, last autumn, I actually dotted quite a few different groups throughout the garden. Different conditions, and this spring, every single bulb actually flowered. So maybe I was lucky, but I think really, they're probably more tolerant of a wider range of conditions than you might actually expect. But other than light, probably the other crucial thing is just how wet your garden is. And these are bulbs that don't like actually being sat in a wet waterlogged soil. They really won't appreciate it, and there's a good chance they might actually rot through. But that being said, the garden here, the soil, is quite heavy, somewhere sort of neutral to heavy really. It's not full on clay, but it's certainly in winter it does stay quite wet, and these, they absolutely survive just fine. So I think really, as long as your garden isn't completely waterlogged, as long as it doesn't puddle all the way through winter, and as long as it isn't really deep shade, they should be absolutely fine. And worst case, if your garden is any of those things, maybe try growing them in a pot, get a big pot and put some smaller bulbs above them and that way you'll get that instant hit of exotic colour for a few weeks it'll be absolutely fantastic Fritillarias, but definitely my favourite bulb. And I remember seeing them growing at my granddad's house over 20 years ago. I bought some from the garden centre myself, and I just remember being amazed that something so tall and so exotic looking could grow from a tiny little bulb like that. Well, quite a big bulb, but you know what I mean. It just really is impressive, and it's something that stayed with me. And that's why, as we moved to this garden, they were the first bulb that I wanted to get planted in last autumn. And to summarise the tips so far, when is the best time to buy them? Buy them now. Now is the best time to get your bulbs. But don't be too worried about the exact time you put them in the ground. Any time from September through to November, you can maybe push that even more. You should be absolutely fine. When they're going to flower? Anywhere from March through to maybe late May next year. It depends where you are in the country, how warm or cold the spring is, and the sort of conditions where you've actually got them planted. But somewhere in that sort of time frame. And if they don't flower that first year, if you just see leaves, don't worry, chances are that bulb just needs to fasten up a bit more and then it'll come back next spring with an amazing flower that will be so much, was absolutely worth the effort. But when it comes to planting, just to go through the tips of that, a depth of around that, 200 mil, something around there, you should be absolutely fine. You might see some people saying about drainage, that it's worth planting them on a bed of grit, laying them on the side. But then I've also read that that first season when the bulb starts growing, it actually just writes itself anyway, as the roots and the stem pull that bulb back round, which does sound believable. So I wouldn't be too worried unless your ground is absolutely waterlogged. And in those circumstances, I'd probably just grow them in a pot anyway. But the crucial thing that I haven't mentioned so far is that the bulb doesn't like to be disturbed. They're not like a tulip, where some people plant them, then dig them up every year, maybe use the same bulbs again the following year. These are plants that like to be left in the ground. And that bulb, it needs to be somewhere undisturbed, where it can slowly build up over time and get bigger and better every year. So that's probably the crucial thing when it comes to how I grow them here in the tropical garden. But equally, it's applicable if you grow a lot of bedding plants. You don't want to put these in an area that you currently sort of dig over in spring to plant your bedding out and at the back end of the year to tidy it up again. So that's why I personally grow them close to the back of borders and around other shrubs and permanent trees in the garden. So here, the palms at the back there, I grow a lot of these around those, around the fatsias, basically the areas that I don't want to dig up all the time. The bulbs I know can just go in, do the thing, and then I don't have to worry about digging them up. You know, if you're digging up your sort of autumn bedding, your collocasias, any tender plants at this time of year, the last thing you want to do is go straight through a bulb. So that'll be my number one tip when it comes to growing them combined with other plants. Put them somewhere with the permanent planting, the structural planting, where they can be left well alone to do the thing, and they'll absolutely reward you for it. So that's Fritillarias. They're my favourite bulb. They've got so much exotic impact. And personally, I think that if they're a summer flowering bulb, then every single person would have them in their tropical garden. So why not give them a chance and have some exotic colour even earlier and really extend that season? So thanks for watching, and if you've got any questions about growing these or any other spring bulb, then drop them in the comments below. See you in the next one.